Okay, let's get uh, started here. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining. This is Melissa Potson. I am your CA Community Manager. We have a very large audience here today. Thank you for joining. Uh, hopefully not too many beeps as people are still starting to roll into the presentation. We have a really wonderful team lined up for you today to talk to you about uh, transitioning from CA eHealth to CA Performance Management. Uh, just a couple logistics. All phone lines have been placed on mute. At the end of today's presentation, we will allow you to ask questions. To do that, you need to hit pound six to unmute yourself. You can also ask questions during the presentation by using the Q&A panel or the chat panel uh, within the WebEx on the right side of your page. Okay, so uh, this presentation, as usual, will be recorded. We will post the replay into the community by end of day today or tomorrow morning at the very latest, so you could share with your colleagues and friends. Uh, without further ado, I will pass over to Dan Chokat. Thank you very much. Go ahead, Dan. Thank you very much, and good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everyone on the phone. Uh, thank you very much for taking the time out of your busy days to join us. Uh, as we discuss uh, our approach in helping customers uh, transition from eHealth to Performance Manager. And I, I just wanted to take about 30 seconds just to introduce myself. So, uh, of course, uh, as you can see from our first slide, I lead the Agile Operations practice here at CA, where we are responsible for delivery of uh, services, uh, as well as ensuring that we are keeping uh, up to date with what our customers are asking for as it pertains to services and consulting. And what we obviously have as a team is a perspective of what current eHealth customers are using the solution for. Um, 30, a little bit about myself, uh, I've been with CA for about eight months. Uh, prior to CA, I led uh, technology and innovation teams at the Rackspace and, and Dell. In, in, in a galaxy uh, long ago and far, far away, I was actually a trainer and field engineer for Carker Communications, which was the original company that brought to market the eHealth product. So I, I have a unique perspective of eHealth from, uh, from many years ago. And one of the charters that I have uh, for a practice is to innovate and to delight our customers with services in which they will uh, find valuable to their business. But what we also want to do as, as a team uh, for our customers is be completely transparent and help you understand where you are from an organizational standpoint in terms of how you're using the product, but also where you need to go and how you can maximize its value. We also want to uh, make sure that we are uh, providing a, 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 a tremendous amount of trust that you instill in us to execute on what you want us to accomplish as it pertains to your business. And with that, the, the team itself obviously believes deeply in that. Uh, Alan and, and Leo uh, and, and Rob Esdale have been with CA uh, many years. Uh, both have a, all of them have a tremendous amount of experience at eHealth and with our customers. So from an, an experience and value standpoint, they have uh, delighted our customers for many years in providing uh, strategic solutions and, and, and opportunities for customers to grow and, and maximize their CA investments. So with, with any new service offering, uh, there's obviously the, the initial goal in which you want to uh, reach. So for today, what we will discuss just that, I think it's a, a worthwhile exercise for the vendor to share with the customer exactly how we got to this point. What were some of the decisions that we needed to make and, and some of the ones that were difficult not to make? Uh, we also want to make sure we share with you uh, our program. Uh, how do you engage with us? What's involved from a technological standpoint? What is the process? What's the motion uh, behind how we're going to uh, assist you in your, in your transition? Uh, we want to, of course, share with you uh, the actual inner workings of, of the service. So we'll be walking through uh, what the reports and the assessments and the actual transition uh, uh, encompasses. Uh, and then we'll obviously want to make sure we understand from you any, any questions or additional concerns and comments that you have. So uh, as I alluded to, the goal with any service 
is to reduce customer effort. We want to make sure that we control your costs, we control our costs, but we want to make sure that we, we provide, again, an experience that's not going to be uh, elongated, that's going to be drawn out, it'll be precise, it'll be prescriptive, and it'll be uh, a, a, a service in which we'll reduce risk. That is obviously extremely important in any type of end-of-life or transition experience from one software platform to the other. We also want to make sure we provide you with a comprehensive understanding of your situation. Uh, there are, in my experience and Alain's and Leo's, there are many e-health implementations uh, throughout the world that have been in existence for two decades, if not more. And there's a tremendous amount of integration and customization that has been done with these systems that, for the customer, they not, might not be aware of. And we want to be able to provide that level of, of visibility for you. Uh, we also want to automate, uh, and we'll talk about this a little more uh, in, in the presentation, but automation reduces risk, and it allows the customer to have confidence in what's being delivered and ensure that we're not um, uh, making any, any uh, mistakes, if you will, during the implementation or transition to a performance manager. Uh, and as I alluded to, there's a lot of information that's in uh, a legacy e-health environment. Uh, some of these systems, are, as I mentioned, are, are highly calibrated, uh, and they're also uh, expansive as it pertains to number of distributed polars and such. But we also, most importantly, we want the experience with our customers to be highly collaborative. Uh, it's, it's certainly um, a responsibility that we have as, as a services organization to provide you with best practices and guidance and leadership and help you understand, you know, this is what success looks like. But we're not in your shoes, and it's very important for us to understand your needs and, and, and requirements of what uh, you believe uh, a successful transition to performance manager looks like. So with any new service offering, and, 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 and certainly this, this is, is always an interesting experience. So back when uh, uh, Alan and, and Leo and I uh, got together in, in uh, the early summer, we talked about what does the customer uh, understand success to be? Obviously, a successful transition performance manager is certainly the top of the list. But we also, as of any service, you want to understand what, what our challenge, what the challenges are from the customer. And in our uh, initial approach, we had an opportunity to, to speak with a, a handful of customers to obviously get a perspective with them. The software development exercise, or as I mentioned, this specific example, uh, a new service offering, we want to understand what the customer will view as successful. Uh, first and foremost, in understanding the map capabilities, you know, customers. I'm channeling here, customers, I have eHealth that with these reports and I'm monitoring these devices and I'm gathering this data, I want that same exact uh, configuration to be replicated in Performance Manager. And we also understand from a, from a futuristic point of view, if I don't have in Performance Manager what I expect, what am I going to have? So it's our point to make sure that we're accommodating that but also providing a liaison, if you will, to product management so they can provide that visibility to you. Uh, again, as I alluded to earlier, reduce risk. Uh, we uh, do not view success for our customers to spend a year migrating from eHealth to Performance Manager. That's unacceptable. That's not, I think, the value that our customers would expect. Uh, first and foremost, uh, we also want to make sure that uh, the configuration that's desirable in eHealth, that's attainable in Performance Manager, is properly transitioned. Uh, in that there aren't any missing gaps or pieces that, that uh, were overlooked. And this is where, as I alluded to earlier, automation plays a huge role in this program. Uh, what we also heard from customers, and, and this is, a, uh, quite frankly, I think a case-by-case -case basis, is running eHealth and Performance Manager in parallel uh, is an operational burden. It, it increases cost, and it's, uh, it runs a risk of providing a distraction to an already very busy operational team at, at our customers. Uh, sometimes this may be necessary, especially if you want to have access to historical data. Uh, but we also, in, uh, if, when it's appropriate, uh, try to avoid this type of scenario, and we'll talk about that a little later. 
Uh, but last but not least, provide a smooth transition. So it's one thing to transition the, the technical aspects of eHealth to performance manager, but it's another thing to make sure that from a business operational and technical uh, perspective, that all of the bases are covered, that our, our customers are properly trained, we've uh, considered and thought about any business climate changes that would impact uh, the adoption of performance manager, uh, but also ensure that once that transition has been completed, uh, business value is being realized by our customers. Now, from a, I guess from a transparency standpoint, uh, you know, CA has uh, selfish motivations uh, as it pertains to helping our customers transition. Uh, first and foremost, uh, while we have a, a, a very, very uh, strong uh, organization in terms of uh, knowledge and skill, uh, we are not a team of 5,000 people from a services standpoint. So we need to look for opportunities to service uh, eHealth customers globally uh, in terms of providing a maximum amount of value and service to them. So we need to be very efficient in how we're approaching uh, customers in which they want to transition to performance manager. We need to make sure the process from a technical standpoint uh, and from a bit from a, an operational standpoint is repeatable. It's tried and true and tested, uh, which obviously is extremely important uh, before venturing into a new service offering that you bring into market. Um, we wanted to avoid any type of, as much as possible, manual processes. Uh, again, as you can, uh, 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 I'm sure, relate, uh, anytime you're doing something manual, that runs the risk of error, and we want to avoid that at all costs. Uh, we want to make sure, again, that we're providing a consultative experience, and that's how we've architected the service offering, uh, and make sure that uh, it's as stress-free as possible. And, you know, there's always going to be stress and during a service engagement, both for the customer and then for the vendor, but I think the best way to alleviate stress is to be as prepared as possible, to understand as much as possible in the, in the front end of the engagement, whether it be through workshops and assessments, so that when you, uh, between uh, CA and our, and our value customers, we understand the risks, we understand what's important, we understand timelines, and we execute. And if we're not going to be able to execute to your satisfaction, we want to make sure we articulate the specific reasons why. Uh, and we knew there was a better way. The manually transitioning large implementations is obviously, as, as you can imagine, very taxing. We want to mitigate that as much as possible, and we've come up with, uh, with an approach. So as I alluded to, uh, we've been um, uh, uh, at this from a development standpoint uh, since uh, late spring, early summer. So we've, we've uh, developed the, the service uh, approach, uh, we've been working on, uh, from a technological standpoint, automation that you'll uh, understand uh, as this presentation uh, flows along. And we've been actually, over the past month, uh, been working with a number of beta customers as uh, we uh, gain greater insights into their usage of eHealth and what's important to them and what's not important to them, but also putting our technology and our service delivery through a shakedown cruise, if you will. Uh, proud to announce that just yesterday we officially launched the service, so it is available um, uh, within North America. And uh, with that said, we, uh, in feedback from our customers, we wanted to make it flexible. Uh, we understand there are customers that are extremely hands-on that want to be very involved in the actual migration, uh, and we want to enable that. Uh, we also want to make sure that we provide, a, if you will, a white glove aspect of the service in which CA is responsible for the entire migration uh, from soup to nuts, and we'll talk about that as well. Uh, but again, to uh, allude to, the, to our customers that want to do uh, much of this on their own, could be security reasons or, or want to uh, make sure from a technical standpoint uh, they um, have uh, the, the adoption internally. Uh, there, the product group within CA has done a tremendous job in providing materials and videos and training that allow our customers to, to get up to speed as quickly as possible. So high level, uh, in our design approach uh, for the actual service, um, we've uh, taken it in, in two phases, if you will. There's the assessment phase and the transition phase. 
The approach for the transition phase, as I have alluded to earlier, is to automate the process of collecting uh, information out of eHealth. Uh, and we'll talk about exactly what we are extrapolating from eHealth uh, uh, in, a, in a little bit. But specifically capturing uh, configuration information reports is something we want to do uh, in an automated way. Uh, we, again, it's going to be collaborative where we'll provide this information to you and you'll see exactly the configuration of eHealth and we'll work with you to uh, articulate and understand what is and is not important as you consider a transition to performance manager. And, and, and again, making sure that we're able to provide a way in which uh, we can uh, have a path forward to automate the actual provisioning of performance manager. So those, these are things that you'll understand in the assessment phase of the engagement. And, and again, we'll talk about that. But for those customers, we understand that you might want to do some of this on your own, and that's fine. Uh, but with the uh, benefits, I think, of a transition phase, as we've discussed earlier, it will greatly accelerate uh, your adoption of performance manager because what we're basically going to be doing is taking the database from eHealth and, uh, if you will, translating it into uh, the format in which is appropriate for performance manager. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, again, we're going to uh, provide this to you as a choice. Uh, you don't have to do this. Uh, you may want to do it manually for cost reasons or, or what have you. That is your choice. But we want to provide, a, again, a full service uh, uh, opportunity in which greatly accelerates your adoption of performance manager and your overall transition uh, experience. And one of the things I wanted to mention uh, in, during our beta, and, and, and we found that actual transition time, and we've timed this out between uh, Alan and Leo, uh, we found that based on all the information, if you were to collect it manually, as opposed to engaging with CA services, it represents a 50 to 75 percent reduction in time in collecting this information. So I just want to make sure I call that out because you know, going through a system manually, as you uh, I'm sure can relate, uh, takes quite a bit of time and our technology accelerates that experience tremendously. Uh, what I'd like to do is transition to uh, Alain Albertini, our chief architect behind our services, to talk a bit more about considerations and some of the information that is very helpful to us to understand up front as we work with you on this transition. So, uh, Alain, I will transition Thank you, Dan. Yep. Thank you very much, Dan, for the, uh, the start. I will uh, keep this screen first uh, to explain. So just a, a quick background for people that they don't know me. Um, <clears throat> I was an ER customer. Uh, I was an external consultant at uh, Concord. I was an employee at Concord, and I'm at CA. So since more than 15 years now, I'm doing uh, e-health and uh, other products. So I have a like Leo, a large experience on the EL side, and I did participate the first day for people that uh, they remember Polaris. Polaris project was the, the grandfather of the PM. So from uh, the old days to uh, today, we have a large team with the experience with me. I can mention uh, Ludovic Felton or Rod uh, uh, with us or Paul Kong, etc. people that they participate to that uh, initiative. So saying that now, um, Dan mentioned there is two things, assessment and the transition. Okay, assessments, uh, this is where here we have some prerequisite or a process in place. And the goal of the assessment is definitely to give you very quickly the view of your e-health environment. And I was surprised during the, I will say, the, the, the pre-test with some customer. We have customer with 20 years of experience on or 10 years of experience, but some of them have disappeared from the team. So it means they have ELs in 20 years, but they don't remember what it's in or they don't know what it's in. So the goal of the assessment is to collect not only what is in a database of ELs, the Oracle database, or even Ingress database, because we still have a customer with Ingress, but to collect the data 
from the database point of view and from the operating system point of view, file system, customization, customization that we did on the fly, customization that the customer did it, et cetera, et cetera. So the assessment is definitely to give you uh, a view in one report of what is in your EL. And believe me, I was surprised by some results, even platform that I did design a long time ago, and some customer was surprised by the result of that uh, because they did not expect uh, that we found so many discrepancy or so many uh, uh, broken pieces, et cetera. So here we have a process and it's kind of simple. Uh, as soon as you determine a customer, we need to have the, 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 the lead, technical lead for the EL, name and contact that you understand. We need a site ID to be sure that we can engage the support for the transition. Um, the prerequisite is just uh, you need to have a window machine where we can install the, the, the kit. Uh, I call that the kit, the EH2PM. Uh, they need at least a minimum uh, to know about the password of the system as uh, uh, the NH user, what we call the NH user, people are familiar, the user that install EL, and to have a root or admin password to be able to run some of the script. So now, when I say run some of the script, in fact, the user well, the administrator has to run only one command, EH2PM, that is. And all the scripts are playing behind the scene. Everything is packed, uh, tar, zip, and put in one archive and bring to us. So basically the ticketing system uh, here is just to be able to open a ticket to get the, to get the, the kit, the executable, EH2PM, and then after, uh, to give us back all the data. For confidentiality, we want to be sure that the, the, the normal process goes through because the data from the customer could have some sensitive information inside. So when the, when the, the, the result is done, we will take uh, internally at CA and we will do uh, the other piece, and I'm going to switch to the other piece, the output. So let me just share, give you one sec, share my screen now. I'm switching to my machine. Okay, so let's imagine that you you have a server, you have a, uh, a cluster, EL cluster, that will be an example here. One console, four polars. Uh, this one was running on Solaris. Um, for your information, we are running today Solaris and uh, Linux. Uh, I don't have any more HP UX on mix, and for Windows, it's coming is depending of uh, which customer need it. But for now, uh, all the tests that we, we did it was on the Solaris and uh, Linux. So all the data came back to us. It's a zip file. We just, uh, with some automation, we have a data center just receiving those data and unpacked and, and process the data. So the output is, first step of the output, I give here an example of a report where and I will go through in the report, I will go through the section quickly after, but you have all the sections with the customer data, and as you can see, there is a small part where that will be the next step, where the architect will add a comment based on the experience. So for a specific section of collecting data, we do an analysis and say, hey, here something is wrong, or here you should do that, or here maybe you have a thousand of users, nobody was connected since two years, you should maybe remove the user, etc." So I will go to the first page and just enlarge for everybody to see what do we analyze. So basically, following the best practice, and we did a um, very, um, uh, methodologic approach with step-by-step. Uh, step. The first thing that the customer wants to know is, how big is my environment, in general, more or less, you know, and what I should expect to have in PM. So you see the section one, high-level sizing information platform. So that gives you, oh, I have about 10 servers, and I didn't know I have a remote polar somewhere, or um, I have a standalone server here, and here I have a cluster, etc. I have two console, three console, etc. What the customer expects is to have an output and to have a sizing. When you do the sizing, um, I will say out of the box with the sizing tools, does not provide necessarily the exact value or the exact optimization of the architecture. That requires to have an architect 
coming from CA services with experience and try to remap and resize the full environment, optimize. Here the tool will automatically optimize and give you the best that you expect in terms of calculation of PM. So that first step already saves a lot of time and architecture and workshop and design in general. That gives you automatically, I will show you after. And now the different section that we have it's based on the best practice, means management of device and elements, CI. I will go in detail after if you want, or you will have that document, by the way. You have a section talking about group and grouping strategy. This is basically what we have here today, what we want to see in PM, but it's a little different. User management and access to the system, so section number four, where you have the role, you have the user. If the user did not connect since two years, there is no reason to migrate a user, etc. You have the reporting strategy, knowing that the old days, 20 years ago, we were talking about reporting. The future, it's about uh, real-time uh, dashboarding, not reporting anymore as a, a, a static PDF. So the reporting strategy that we have in here has to be converted to a a uh, dashboarding strategy with data in PM. Monitoring threshold. Everybody know about uh, what we call uh, live exception in EL, and there is a lot of things to do with the live exception for deviation of norm, et cetera, and transform that into PM automatically, I would say, if possible. Some of them also, and that is the beauty of the assessment, is we find that people with about hundreds of different type of profile, and you can optimize maybe in two and three profiles. When you have people going for CPU at 89.9, uh, another profile 89.5, maybe if we just do 89, it will be enough. So that is the optimization for the monitoring threshold. You have the platform integration. You know that EL could be integrated with a ticketing system, with a provisioning system, with another system in general. You need to know that before to go to PM to be sure that you can move manually or automatically that kind of integration. There is a section dedicated to, because that it's a big topic, HR. So high availability and disaster recovery definitely are two different definitions based on ITIL and different way to manage that between EL or PM. EL High availability is depending if it works for the polling or for the application itself. We have some solution like Sun Cluster, like Veritas, etc. cetera, um, is different uh, in a PM. So we need to be sure that the customer agree where we are and where we want to go and how we can achieve it. The last piece about the governance, what did they put in place? Did they put automatic backups? Do they put some uh, 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 transfer of data outside, etc.? All those kind of information will be part of the report. Now, as you can see for each section, and I will go for maybe the first one, we provide to the customer, first of all, where come from the information. Second of all, which data support the information because you will have also the package that we collected. So if the customer is looking for something specific, he can go to that uh, file to find the information. Uh, we provide some explanation. Here is a good example. This uh, ER cluster was uh, three, I said four, sorry, three uh, polar in one console. Uh, you have the retention of data. Interesting because it has to be moved that the customer wants to follow the same kind of logic for retention of data to go to PM, etc. So here, now the device element, etc. I'm going uh, fast. And now you have a commentary. Commentary section is depending on what the architect wants to put in, depending on what he can see. Saying that, automatically the best um, platform, CA platform, will be calculate. Calculate to optimize. I have a lot of concern and customers have concern when they said, I had about uh, three server total, uh, let's say uh, uh, 64 gig of RAM in total in my EL environment. I go to PM, I need six server, double, and I need about 300 gig of RAM in total. Can we do something to optimize it? It's exactly what we put in these tools uh, for the assessment based on the engineering that has a calculator plus the CA experience, CA services experience on the field. So as you can see, we have a lot of detail about the platform itself, how many elements, device, items, interface, QS, etc. And we provide also, let me do a little zoom, 
We provide also the file system, optimized file system, following the best practice, not necessarily what the customer do in general, because they do what they want, but more, not necessarily what they need. Here is what they need to have optimized platform. So I'm not going to all the pages. Um, it will be attached to the presentation, but again, just to show quickly, you have all the sections. For each section, you have an explanation at the beginning. You have what they have inside, what should be and could be optimized. You have at the end the section of the architect commentary. Here is just a template, so we, we, we put some quotes, but not uh, commentary. Um, you have some uh, commentary, how you can optimize, etc. cetera. Um, I can show you something quick that was uh, very interesting on this one. We have a user, uh, I think was on a section, sorry for that, discovery policy grouping, and we go to the user. And we have users that they never connected since at least two years. So here, if I take number of users, no logging, uh, 100 users on a console, 9,900 on the back end for no reason, and there is no logging during the last six months. So basically, we know that we have a lot of people in the ER system that they don't need to be migrated because they never log in since at least 2010, 2009, 2007, and 2012. So the goal of this report is to provide, at the end of the assessment, open the discussion with your customer to say, okay, that is your environment, this is what we recommend, how now do you want to proceed? Manually to do a transition, semi-automatically means you get the data, you can do some script and uh, yourself and move into PM. Or the third option that your services propose with an automation engine in the middle to take the data from Yelp and to move the data for P to PM. The third option, based on this assessment, if you put in by the third option, this is what I Dan mentioned, we optimize the transition uh, by 50 to 75 percent. So if you need 10 hours to do something, uh, it will take between two to three hours to do it. If you take six months uh, to do a normal transition, we can do in a month. So one month, two months. This is the difference. I insist on the fact that we are not doing only ELF database. We are going through a lot of information that people do not uh, know sometime, like uh, we have an example for the expert on, uh, on the call today, like the Finder TCL. The Finder TCL out of the box, when a customer was modified a long time ago, um, that means they have a customization for devices that they are not originally covered by Yelp. So this customer is a good example because they did a modification of the Finder TCL. If you don't know that, definitely when you migrate, 3,000 device in PM, PM cannot discover those device because they did this modification in the Finder this year. That was the goal, to be very technical, very deep, and uh, the most accurate that we can be on the ELT environment, and the user can take his decision to engage us to help to go smoothly. In that, I will go back to, I will send the, I will send the report, the PDF, so you can attach uh, definitely, and then if you want to share again your screen to go to uh, the next um, uh, the next slide, basically. Um, Dan, can you share your screen? Yep, you um, are. Oh, okay. You, so you the, are now the, mixed. Thank next you. Next slide. Very, yeah. Thank you very much. So, uh, as you have seen, Alon has gone through a and there's a lot more behind it, as you can imagine, uh, what the uh, assessment report entails. Um, talking specifically about you know, devices and connections, lab exception rules and such. And it, it, it's, it, and, and Alon, I think, provided uh, a guideline, uh, and this is based on our experience and during our beta program, of the amount of time that these uh, assessments and gathering of the information takes. So to give you an idea, and this is where uh, the expertise Alan and Leo and others have within our services practice, we, we kind of 
see the e-health environments as small, medium, and large, and it's a ballpark, the best we can do. Uh, and so from your perspective as our customer, um, and everything has an asterisk, even though I didn't put it in here, uh, small environment, about 40 hours to do the assessment, and complex, 120 hours, give or take, to give you an idea of, uh, of time. And again, in these reports, we, uh, uh, from a services standpoint, are providing you with recommendations, suggestions, and considerations um, as you think about your transition to performance management. So if you're now thinking about transition to performance manager after you've had the opportunity to talk to our team and digest the information in the report, um, what we're then doing is, and if you've given CA the, the, the pleasure of, of transitioning you to performance manager, what we're doing is not only taking the eHealth database, but we're pruning it. We're, as Alan had alluded to in his um, report, there's information that you do not need and that we'll be taking out of the, the database and transitioning it into Performance Manager. Now, our design goal was to transition historical data. We understand that it would have been uh, a, a, a nice additive to the service. Uh, but in our early investigation and, and some, some initial field experience, we found that this was uh, close to being an impossibility with database schemas and different uh, data sets and such. Uh, we saw this uh, in our early investigation as, as quite frankly painful. So we're transitioning almost everything except historical data, which is in my second slide, I implied that there might be instances in which our customers would need to run eHealth side by side with performance manager because of the importance uh, to the business of your businesses uh, for historical data. Now again, we're, we're still seeing uh, from a experience in transitioning a half if not more uh, reduction in total time as opposed to doing it manually uh, and using uh, CA services uh, for this automated transition. And again, our estimated uh, time of transition, small, medium, or large, 40, 80, and 120 hours or more, depends on obviously customizations and integrations and, and, and such. But you know, it was, it was an interesting uh, experience with our beta customers as we were going through the reports we, quite frankly, were running into the same, almost same questions uh, with uh, our, our beta partners that we have with uh, almost uh, new customers and prospects. They're trying to figure out from a monitoring standpoint, uh, how do we scale? How do we scale the information across groups? We're getting a tremendous amount of information already. How do we become more uh, um, precise in what we want to capture from a metrics and data standpoint. Uh, we are, from a NOC standpoint, managing a number of issues already. You know, from a performance management standpoint, uh, this is obviously impacting the amount of alarms we get. How we're, we're, we need to manage and find better ways of managing those types of events. Uh, we want to obviously make sure we're getting meaningful data. It's great to, to uh, uh, interrogate and, and query every uh, uh, SNMP, uh, MIB, and, and OID uh, that's available to us and gather data in other uh, unconventional ways, but help us understand what data we should be capturing. And wanted to orient the audience to a, a couple different services that you may or may not be aware of, uh, but from a, from a, a a value standpoint, we offer what's what we call a monitoring governance service. And this is where a, 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 a Ellen or Leo Purcell, one of our architects and uh, several others, will spend time with you, uh, whether uh, you're a administrator or a, a vice president infrastructure or if you're on the capacity planning team. And if you're trying to resolve these types of questions in your mind, uh, we have an engagement that satisfies uh, that business operational and technical need, where we're working with you and defining un and understanding uh, from a best practices standpoint 
What data should you be capturing? But most importantly, what is the value of this data to your business? You know, are there specific governance reasons that you need this data? Are there business reasons? Are there compliance reasons? Uh, how, from a operational flow, uh, once this data is gathered and a report is being developed, who is reviewing that report? Who needs that report? Because as a, as a CA customer, I'm sure you're aware that we have a number of different technologies uh, in, in the marketplace that provide uh, dashboard level reporting, whether it's uh, service operations insight or, or whether it be a CI, a, a CA uh, a CABI platform, if you will, that provides dashboards and reports and, stuff and such. We, we're, we're moving to being much more uh, consultative from a business standpoint and provide, and making sure you're getting this exact data that you need out of CA technologies. Uh, so from that standpoint, uh, as we engage with our customers uh, to do, help you define these needs, we work with our customers anywhere between a week. We spend a month with them, especially for larger customers in which they have multiple business units, multiple technology groups that are, are trying to be aligned uh, as it relates to uh, remediation procedures, data gathering procedures, and government. What we've also uh, seen our customers be very interested in is uh, our application management services portfolio, or AMS as we call it. And think of AMS as, if you will, a managed service. Uh, we have had customers approach us uh, with the narrative of, we love CA software. It's providing us a tremendous amount of value. But my NOC team or my administration team uh, needs to refocus their time and energy on initiatives that uh, provide more value to our business, whether it be rolling new applications, uh, user experience, uh, and such. And what AMS provides to our customers is, from an operational standpoint, uh, we are managing the CA software for you. Now, certainly we have uh, a handful of CA products that we make available through our uh, DXI platform, uh, and Performance Manager is on that path at some point. But uh, from an adoption standpoint, the last thing CA wants to uh, be is, prov is providing administrative overhead to an already uh, overworked IT team, an administrative team. So from a, uh, an AMS standpoint, we want to provide not only administrative support, whether it's fixes and health checks proactively, but also guidance on how to use the software uh, and accelerate that, uh, that adoption curve and, and realization to value, if you will. What we'll also do is provide that connection, if you will, and, and our architects, if you will, function as a trusted advisor. So if you uh, do not foresee uh, your organization having a, an architect that is going to be an expert in e-health architecture or, excuse me, a performance manager architecture, and you look to CA to provide you that business operational and technical leadership, and that's also part of the service. It's a, it's a full service, managed service where we're providing strategic guidance, but also operational relief uh, to your CA investment. Uh, and this comes in a number of different uh, flavors, if you will, from a contractual standpoint, uh, we can make it as small as six months, or we can make it up to three years, uh, depending on how you foresee your business evolving uh, and uh, the mix of uh, responsibilities within your organization. And we've also tiered this program. So as we go uh, up, to, up, up the value chain in terms of uh, understanding if your environment is mission critical or 24 by 7 or you need to adhere to SLAs or, 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 or customer uh, requirements of the business, we offer this in bronze, silver, and gold, uh, with each tier having a increased level of value as it pertains to what you're getting from CA uh, training bundle, the architecture time, um, and, and other uh, value-add pieces such as integration modules and such that provide you uh, greater visibility. So think of AMS as that, if you will, that one throat to choke, but yet that uh, partner in your business that'll that'll ensure that you're successful with our, with our respective technologies. And certainly I would be remiss in mentioning that we have uh, a breadth of uh, educational programs that can also help you get up to speed uh, with CA software. As I mentioned earlier, the product group has done a tremendous job of 
providing uh, through social media videos uh, and guides on how to be successful in transition to performance manager and considerations. But also we have formal educational classes uh, that we provide either through e-learning uh, mediums, but also being instructional. Um, I believe I have concluded with my presentation. Uh, so again, thanks for everybody for joining, but I think we wanted to Melissa, uh, we wanted to open this up to uh, a poll, perhaps? Yes, let's do two things uh, simultaneously. What I'll do is I'll open up the poll right now. So if everyone can please take a minute to answer those two questions, that would be great. Um, and let's take some live questions. Uh, Dan Allen, uh, quite a few questions in the Q&A panel, if you can uh, also work on those. Uh, so live yeah, questions. I was saying I, I started to answer during the presentation. Uh, sorry for that. I start directly on the on the chat to answer to everybody on the QA. Sorry, not on the chat on the QA. Yeah, fantastic. Thank you, Alan. I appreciate that. Uh, so if you want to ask a live question, uh, please do so. Hit pound six to unmute yourself. Who has a question? Hey, Dan, Alan, you want me to take some from the Q&A panel? We could take some, uh, and you can maybe address them live? Yeah, sure. Uh, there is one Please. question interesting for Dan, um, that the report, um, that the tools kit is uh, available. Uh, what was available uh, out of CS services? Uh, I cannot find the question anymore. <laughs> it was um, how people can get the EH2PM kit. Yeah, so so today, yeah, today we do we have not made the decision to make the tool available to our end users directly. It is uh, it is uh, a a enabling technology that is to be used by our, uh, our our services team to of course expedite and make repetitive the uh, the actual transition from eHealth to performance manager. Um, but uh, I certainly. Yeah, and this is maybe just me, the, the startup software person in me. I'm very open to uh, uh, other ways in which we can accelerate your eHealth to PM experience. So I'm happy to have that conversation with you. Uh, we have not uh, planned to provide end users with training on the technology, but I, I certainly want to, uh, I would certainly engage yep. and, and welcome that discussion. Welcome that the question discussion. was from uh, Katalin. Uh, uh, these tools, as I understand, is only available engagement, uh, for engagement with CS services. So, yep. There is one question maybe that uh, from Camel. Uh, CAPM sizing can provide the information about total disk required for DR, DA, blah, blah, blah. I totally agree. The online sizing tools give you, sometimes with a lot of confusion for customer, give you the partition only, the total, sorry, of storage for a server, not including the OS, not including necessarily the best practice backups, etc. The tool that I did present, the assessment, give you, first of all, all the file system, all the mounting point, means including the root, including swap, including uh, repository, including the data, including the backup, everything and we do the calculation. I give an example for people that know PM. When you do DR, you need to do a, a catalog and you need to do the data, and you need to separate both on two different storage with two different mounting points. Uh, percentage that we agree, finally, 95% for the data, 5% maximum for the catalog, um, on at least for 3.2 of PM. So that file system and sizing, yes, it's uh, part of the report. Automatically, you will have that. I hope that answers to a Kamal question. Is there a question? Yep, Melissa. You, want... you guys hear me? Yep. Yep. Uh, last hey, call for is... live question. So if you have a live question, just hit pound six to unmute yourself. All right. Uh, this is Chris Knowles um, with Railing. Currently, I used to be with. Uh, 
MCI and Verizon and all that back in the day. So run the giant installations down to the small one that I have here. Um, I know that a lot of the, when you guys do the assessments and, and you take the data out and put it in, um, automatically provision it over, you're using some provisioning techniques that they have, they're have. they going to have to be the regular ones that are in PM, right? I mean, it's clearly not DCI, right? Um, Correct. Which is how the world has built their provisioning platforms into um, eHealth, using DCI and wrapper scripts and whatever, your automation APIs all come mm -hmm. back to DCI. Mm -hmm. Do you leave behind ways to make that adaptation so that we're taking your our DCI scripts and stuff that we have in our existing provisioning for our automations that are homegrown over to feed our PM installation once you get it going? Interesting question. So the answer quick, yes. Um, I mentioned three ways to do a non-smooth to smooth migration. First way is manual. So you do a, you know, monkey on a keyboard. You have a left screen right. with PM and a right screen with, and that is not very smooth. You have a semi-automatic, I will come back to this one, because it's exactly what you described. And you have the full automation. The full automation, you have an engine in the middle. We use MWIB to do it. We, pump, we pull out the data from ELT. We prune the data. We push the data with REST API, et cetera, into PM. So let's go back to the, uh, semi-automation. What is a semi-automation is, basically, during the assessment, we collect a lot of data, we put in a database, but we still have those data as, like you said, DCI, CSV, blah, blah, blah. So we do recommend to the people that they want to a semi-automation, you want to write your own script, fine. Here are the data, you write your script, and you move that into PM. We, are, we have CS services, the experience to do that. Why I prefer to go for the automation is because the engine is already built. I don't want to reinvent it. But definitely, if you want to go to a semi-automation, yes, it's possible to get a DCI from a DCI to manipulate the data, crunch the data to be able to provision and do something in PM. To be able to do that, you need to know PM. You need to know a lot of things in PM in terms of uh, API. How do you create a tenant? How do you create a group? How do you populate a group? How do you create a monitoring profile? How do you um, create a discovery profile, etc. So the semi-automation, to my point of view, it's only for ELP expert and PM expert. I don't see the point to recommend that to customers. If a customer wants to do it, it will take forever if they don't have two or three or five years of experience of PM. Now tell me, what is a customer that has four or five years of experience on PM that is doing an ELF migration today? None. So basically, semi-automation, yes, it's doable, no, it's not, it's not recommended. It's not the best solution. But if you need the CS services advice to do it, definitely, yes, we can do it. I would prefer to go for automation. You understand, not reinvented the wheel. The automation, just take the data from ELP, transform, I would say, uh, a DCI to a REST API. Just to do simple, okay? It's not so simple, but it's about that. I take my DCI, I transform to a REST API, and push and create what I need to create in PM. Done. That answer to your question? Well, yeah, it does. It's just so you take the data out of one and move it to the other. But the configuration data, mind you, not the historical Correct. data. And move it uh, to the historical other. Historical data? So, no, no. Oh, uh, right. Okay. No, I got it. No historical data. I got it. That's my next <laughs> yeah. question. Um, my, so uh, my advice. We unhook our, our, my advice our, what our existing. Okay. My advice for everybody. Do not try. I have one experience. I was against that one in the last five years. But I have one experience. It's a disaster. Don't try to migrate historical data. I give you two advice. The first one is, you run in parallel, and when you are happy, you shut down Yelp. Now, you need to keep 10 years of data in Yelp, fine. You run in parallel, you shut down the pollers. You stop polling, not shut down the VM, not shut down the server, shut down the, the polling part of Yelp. 
you keep access to the database through the console, the front end, so you still have access to the um, historical data in ELF, but we are not polling anymore. And you run your PM instance. So that is the best way to do it. And I have another way that I don't really like it, but you can still go in PC and attach the historical data from ELF as a data source. So PC will have PM as dashboarding in the real live data, and PC will have also ELF as historical data type of, but it's not exactly the same dashboard, et cetera, you know that. But that is a recommendation as an architect. Right, so to support that, CA published the end of life announcement for 2018 for eHealth, right? And customers that have long, data retention requirements, two years, five years, seven years, you know, depending bank industry, whatever. Um, CA is gonna continue to support eHealth for those period of time, right? So I don't That's have where it goes against it a, what it be a, the yes. publishing of the end of life, end of service announcement says. Yeah, so I, mean, I wanna I wanna be I wanna yeah, I wanna be careful negotiating through the, the legal aspect of it, but I do believe that CA will be supporting customers uh, up until May 31st of 2018. Right. I just so have a transition today, that's a six, five month, six month window to do your transition and then mm. run your historical stuff for the next two years or five years. What happens when so you health crashes? Let me take, let me take somewhere. this one. Let me let me. Yeah, let's take let's take yeah, let's take this one offline. Yeah. I mean, it's right. Really, I mean, but it's, it's, yeah. you can run okay. forever. You instance as well that you are not polling. My point is, the I never seen a ticket open for a EL that is not polling. A EL that is shut down, the poller is shut down. I'm not changing anything in a database. It's just a Oracle 